Currently Kirkland, your source for city news and events in the community. With Connie Terman at the news desk. Stay up to date with weekly news reports and what's happening in Kirkland. Now, here's Connie. Welcome to Currently Kirkland, I'm Connie Terman. Congratulations to the participants of this year's Junior Softball World Series. The series has brought in teams from all around the world to compete against one another at Everest Park and has been a fixture in Kirkland since 1999. Currently Kirkland field reporter Mike Connor brings you some highlights and the results of the championship game. It's every August for seven days that Kirkland turns into an international hotspot for over 120 teenage girls and their coaches. This year, the tournament hosted teams from Canada, Europe, Mexico, and the Philippines, along with six teams from the U.S., including the host team from Kirkland. It was fun meeting everyone, and like, it, we even like became friends with all the teams we beat and lost to, so it was cool. This year, the U.S. East team from Greensburg, Pennsylvania, took home the 2014 Junior Softball World Series banner with a 6-2 win over the Latin American team from Mexicali, Mexico. A lot of hard work, dedication. The girls have put in many, many years to get to this point, and I'm glad they were all able to pull it together. They have a great group of girls that work well and lots of team chemistry. Many of these girls will go on to become famous players and coaches in their own right. The NCAA World Series this year. Both the pitchers in the championship game came from here. Chadwick hopes that folks will come on out next year and enjoy the 2015 World Series. These girls are, in fact, the best teams in the world at their age group. And these girls work very hard to be the best at what they can do. Let's get ready for softball! Neighborhoods across Kirkland celebrated National Night Out on August 5th. The annual Nationwide Night Out Against Crime is an effort to promote involvement in crime prevention activities and an opportunity for neighborhoods to meet with public safety officials from the city. Currently Kirkland camera crews visited block parties in Juanita and South Rose Hill neighborhoods to see how communities were fighting back against crime. It's National Night Out. It's a time for them to get to know the police department, the fire department. They get to see each other. You know, besides just saying hi, we all come together. What we usually do is we get a bouncy house with the water slide for the kids. We have the police and the fire department here, and then we do hot dogs and just have a community get together. We invite the neighbors over there and our whole community here. Thank you, Jack. That's a tomato that you grew in your garden? Very nice. Can I see that again? Are you going to eat it? Okay. See you later. <laughs> well, we've been doing this for eight years, so it's kind of down to a fine science now. And everybody looks forward to it, so there's no work involved anymore. But it, I started out by going around. I made a flyer, and I went to every door, knocked on the door, gave them a flyer, personally invited them to come out. And back in those days, I had to contact the police department and contact the fire department and request an educational visit from both of those. Now you contact the parks department and get a permit, and the parks department contacts fire and police for you. We feel much safer when we know we're all watching out for each other. And it does feel a lot safer knowing that I know all my neighbors, and they all know me. Mayor Amy Wallen appreciates the event's focus on community and working together to prevent crime. They're asking the police questions about what's happening in their neighborhood, what they need to be watching out for. Um, they're getting together, they're barbecuing, you know, they're, they're, they're really amongst friends. That's the real community when people are watching out for each other, um, watching out for older people, watching out for little kids, and just everyone's kind of aware of, of what everybody else is doing and who belongs here and who doesn't, and it's a good thing. Neighbor Neighborhood Resource Officer Audra Weber encourages every neighborhood to get involved. I would hope that everybody gets involved with National Night Out because this is a fun atmosphere. The kids get to come out and they get to play in the police car and the fire engine and you get to know all your neighbors and just have a great time and enjoy some good food. If you would like more information about National Night Out or if you would like to host a National Night Out block party next year in your neighborhood, visit www.kirklandwa.gov and search National Night Out. At the Seniors Are Artists Too Art Show, many artists have proven that age is just a number. And local driftwood artist Joe Marsh is no exception. You know, seniors 
have a wonderful wide capacity of doing, learning new things, of doing all kinds of different art. Oh, it feels good. Touch. Oh, my. See? Yeah. Very nice. Now, this, you can see the color has improved, too. Marsh is a great example of someone who has thrived in art throughout her retirement. Well, one year I happened to read in the Seattle Times that there was a Driftwood Sculpture Show in Bothell. I knew right then that that's what I could do when I retired. I am not a painter. I could never put anything on a blank piece of paper except for words. The art involved is nature's art, and we're just facilitating bringing it to life. That's what a Driftwood artist does. And it took me three years before there was a class I could join because I was working full time. But when I retired, I was there the very next week in class. And now I'm teaching three classes at senior centers. And uh, it's a wonderful involvement. From student to teacher, Marsh understands the importance of senior outreach and encourages her students to submit pieces into the show. Oh, I think it's wonderful to, to have outreach for seniors. You know, that we have a lot of preconceived notions of, of what old age does to people. And this is a show that may upset some of those misconceptions. I put just one piece in each year uh, into the Merrill Gardens Senior Art Show. And this year it'll be Transformation, which is the centerpiece there on the wall. The piece Marsh has chosen to submit was truly a transformation, as its name would suggest. This was the only hole, this large hole, was the only one that appeared when I picked up the piece. When people ask, what kind of wood are, is this sculpture made of, my usual answer is, found. Found wood. Driftwood art has changed the way Marsh interacts with nature. You never go on a hike without looking for wood. You know, you're driving along a country road and you say, whoops, let's go see where is that piece. <laughs> I want to see that piece. Are things sorted? I see, do, I see groups. Of sort things. of, yeah. Sort of, yeah. So this might be several years of work here. <laughs> Longer than I'll live, that's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> Finding is half the fun in this, in this business of driftwood sculpture. Currently Kirkland camera crews were able to chat with several of Joe's fellow artists at the show. Oh, I love it. She takes the natural beauty of the wood and, and enhances it. The Lura method that she teaches is, is designed to bring out the natural quality of that piece of wood. This is mine. It's an impressionistic Lion King. If you look at it, from the other way, you can see the lion's face in the mane. Mostly I look for curved lines and holes and openings because it's a piece of wood that's just flat isn't terribly interesting to me. Whereas this one, there's, there's holes here and there's holes here and there's holes coming down there. And you can see through it, open, all the openings there. And I love the way it opens up and, and suggests shapes and forms to you. Oh, it's really nice, and I have some art here. The two, uh, the dog over there and the little girl's face. I think it's great. I'm going around and voting myself, and uh, I'm still, like, on the first section because I'm, like, looking really close at everything. I think it's awesome because when I saw this, I thought, wow, there's 50 and over, you know, a special thing, and I'm like, I'm over 50. And uh, I think it's just a great concept. Kirkland Senior Council member Betty Stevens tells us more about the show. It started out, I think, uh, six years ago with 50 pieces. This year we have about 140. Uh, last year we had 173. I love the show. In fact, this year it seems better than last year. I love the way the quilts are displayed. They're hanging. They're easier to see. Um, Tristan and I kind of enjoy the artwork. The texture is good, the colors are good. I like it. The art show is for the community. It's not a benefit. Uh, we don't charge. And the artwork that these 50 plus year olds do is stunning. Mural Gardens at Kirkland hosted the event and featured many art pieces entered by its residents. I moved into Mural Gardens five and a half years ago and I uh, started painting then. This was a, a landscape that I saw, but I changed the coloring in the back so that it would be uh, more diffuse. 
and then left the, the white hair just for my sake. For my whole life, I loved color, and I loved, but I never had a chance with family and working, never had a chance to do any artwork. And when I moved in here, this was my opportunity to see if I could do anything with it, and I love it. The annual art show is sponsored by the Kirkland Senior Council. For more information about the council, visit www.kirklandwa.gov slash senior council. The Kirkland Youth Council has completed the latest in its We've Got Issues video series. This video is about teen suicide, an unfortunate reality that touches the lives of teens in Kirkland. Mike Connor sat with one of the Youth Council leadership members to find out more. Sasha Olsner is a typical high school student with some sobering memories from his ninth grade year, 2011. When I was in uh, ninth grade, yeah, a kid two weeks before summer, unfortunately, committed suicide. Um, and I, I didn't know him too well, like I went and got ice cream with him once, but uh, some of my friends knew him really well and it, it's just, so, it's so sad and devastating because they're all, they're like great people and, and it's so sad because you, you, people don't realize like how important those people were and how, until, until they're gone. Sasha, having been on the youth council for a year, found himself on the video team hard at work trying to make a video that can make a difference in teens' lives. To all the people who have hurt me, and to all the people that this will hurt. I see the faces, I see people smiling, talking, going about their days. For the longest time, that used to be me, but there was always pain. Pain brought on not by myself, as this will be, but by others. I remember the ideas brewing about like we wanted to write something that would kind of go through and it was cool to see how that actually ended up happening because I remember Timmy and I were talking one of the other council members were talking about it and we thought like the in and out of like a pen writing and like you hear it through that's just something that like would kind of like add a lot of depth to the video. The Youth Council consulted with counselors and experts from Youth Eastside Services and Youth Suicide Prevention Program to craft a unique perspective on teen suicide. Most suicide videos, they just capture that suicide is like, you should watch out, this is suicide. But, but our video captured how if this changed, if this changed, like it, it had the flashbacks in it and it showed if this little thing was different, that it could have changed this whole person's life, that you don't know what's going on with this person. And it kind of gave an insight into my character's look that like coming home to my mom and if she was just supportive about my grades and maybe helped me a little more, that I could have been more supportive about myself and, and been fine. But it just shows every piece and how it's, it's not just one thing that's gonna tick these pers this person off. It's, it's, it's a collection of things throughout their life and it kind of just really went in depth in that person's personality and showed them what's going on. A recent event makes this topic hit close to home again. There was a kid at Kirkland Junior this year, an eighth grader who was completely like basketball star or whatever and committed suicide, unfortunately, and no one would have ever known. And so it, it can be different for everyone. You, you just have to kind of talk to people and make sure everyone's okay all the time. The video has been shared with the Lake Washington School District, Youth Eastside Services, and Youth Suicide Prevention Program. Lake Washington School District may include the video in their staff training on depression and teen suicide this year. The We've Got Issues program is just one of the many service projects and events that the Kirkland Youth Council is hard at work on throughout the year. Sasha encourages others to apply. The Youth Council is just something that's so different and so, so much fun. It's, it's so different than Honor Society at school. That's just straight community service. We have meetings twice a month on Mondays, 40 people get together, there's snacks, and we just talk about stuff that's going on, and everyone has different opinions, and it's fun to see like the other side of things. I think just the age gap, especially like from sixth graders to seniors in high school, it's awesome. The sixth graders have all these abstract ideas, and then the older kids can kind of manage the, the ideas and kind of create reality with those. And it, it's great to have like such a broad spectrum of like different ideas. What we try to do is get diversity around Kirkland, get everyone we can from all different parts of the uh, city so we can help every part of the city. If you would like to watch the Youth Council video on teen suicide or are interested in joining the Youth Council, go to www.kirklandwa.gov slash youth. You can also contact Reggie Schubiger, Youth Services Coordinator, by phone or email. Applications are due by September 26th.
As always, thank you for watching Currently Kirkland. Remember, you can watch us on demand on the city's website, on your mobile devices, and on YouTube. If you have any news tips, suggestions, or comments, please send them to KirklandTV at kirklandwa.gov. We'd love to hear from you.